you guys, I am doing it. I have dozens of new makes, things that I'm adding to my closet after this month. If you remember from last month's plans video, my only goal for October was to start clearing out some of my works in progress. And in sort of thinking about that, I decided that some of the reason why I was not tackling works in progress prior is because I had so many. I would come in, look at the bin of works in progress and just feel so overwhelmed by the number of projects in there that I couldn't decide on which one I should work on. So instead of picking one from there, I would just start with a new project. Um, something that I instantly knew what pattern and fabric and everything was gonna come together. Um, so I decided to do a little challenge. Um, I've been doing it through TikTok because it kind of helps keep me accountable and TikTok is kind of like the ideal place to um, to do that kind of video. But I've been drawing, like I wrote down all the projects on little pieces of postcard and I'm just randomly drawing. So I don't have to make a decision. Whatever I draw is whatever I make. And that has helped so much. I cannot even begin to tell you. And I've been getting such a positive response from other people on TikTok as well. So is, but also people who have um, their own small businesses, people who have home projects that they need to do, um, all kinds of different um, types of unfinished projects, whatever format those take. So I am so excited to show you absolutely everything that I sewed, refashioned, finished sewing, and I'm going to be able to add to my closet. So sit back because I think this one's going to be a bit of a bit of a long one, but I'm so, so excited. A lot, a lot of good stuff. All right. First off, you guys have seen this already. I just posted this a couple days ago, but this is my new winter raincoat. Um, I call it the winter raincoat because the hood is actually lined with like a brushed cotton. So it keeps my ears nice and warm and super cool because the prints match. I bought this fabric. And then I bought this fabric. I didn't treat this fabric myself. It came like this waterproof um, and had a matching brush cotton. Super, super cool. Um, so that is project number one. This jacket is the Seamwork Francis. And you can go back and look at that project review video to learn everything you need to know about that fabric, the pattern, all of that stuff. I'll link it here for you guys. Um, Biscuit is eating a tripod. Um, okay, next up we have this cutie little top that started out as a dress um, that I got at Goodwill and it had a pink bodice and then the skirt was this floral and I just, I mean it fit, it was okay, but it just didn't really feel like my style anymore. So I turned it into this little top, right? Look how cute the back is. Oh my god, adorable. It is a quick sew. New look. It is a new look pattern. I'll link it for you guys here or I'll put the pattern number here, but the back is just stinking adorable. So obviously I use the skirt to make the bodice and then use the bodice to make the ruffles. And this is what we have. Adorable. The, the fabric is like a stretch or I think it's a um, Liverpool knit actually. All right. So this was another refashion. How cool is this? Um, this was a dress that I got at Goodwill maybe dress barn. I can't remember. Um, but the bodice was like this black knit and it had a little like flap here, really, really like early 2000s. And then the skirt was actually this boucle knit. And that's really what I got the dress for was for the skirt. So I was able to turn it into a Salneo cardigan. So using the skirt as the bodice of the jacket. And then do you guys remember that Seamwork Danny dress that I made, if you've been watching for like a year or so, you might remember. Black pleather Seamwork Danny. And from the get go, I was like, this is a fail. It doesn't fit. Something's wrong. For some reason, I had four darts in the back instead of two. And it was just all very strange. So I put that in my works in progress bin because I knew I needed to like figure something out with that. Well, I decided to just cut it up and I turned it into the sleeves for this. And then... The sleeves were long enough. I could have just hemmed them, but I really wanted like a long sleeve. So I added this like black um, knit of some kind that I just had in my stash. And I've got this super, super cool cardigan, right? And because it came from a skirt, there's like a little vent in the back, right? I mean, those are the details that I think make refashioning so much fun 
because I would never normally take the time and trouble to like add a vent to the back of a little cardigan like this but but it's there just a cute little story I had a um skill pop class this month where I taught everyone how to make infinity scarves and there was the sweetest little 11 year old girl in there oh I hope she sticks with it so so bad she really liked her scarf it was um like a glitter velvet <laughs> perfect for an 11 year old right um her mom really had to help her like her mom was definitely there to help her but she knew how to thread the machine her grandmother had given it to her and showed her how to do everything she knew how to do that so just a matter of like sewing seams for the first time oh it was so much fun right um this you really really have to see on me and you guys will soon this refashion this work in progress project um went viral on tiktok it blew up i woke up the next morning and had like i mean i had been getting like <laughs> four notifications prior to this and I woke up and this one had the 99 plus and I was like oh TikTok broke like something happened and then sure enough it was my video and I think to date it's gotten like almost 70 views <laughs> 70,000 views um it's crazy but this was a dress so imagine this as a full dress but it didn't really fit through the like hip area it was too tight so I chopped it up and made it into a top. And this top is one of the most flattering things I've ever put on my body. And then um, used the rest of it to make this skirt. And the skirt has like all these gores in it. It's kind of hard to see, but they're definitely in there. Can you see that triangle that's there? This is 100% silk. Um, it's, it's really, really great. I love wearing it. I just feel so like girly and pretty and... I don't know. I really love it. So look out for this one. I filmed it as separates, um, but you could totally wear them together as well. So no patterns for either one of those. I just literally cut out the middle part and hemmed the respective parts. All right. Then I made this little pair of culottes and this is a Simplicity or McCall's pattern. I can't remember. Again, I'll put it down here for you guys. Um, but just a pair of lightweight rayon chalet culottes. I already had these cut out. I just needed to sew them together. And that's what I did. They're a little bit short. Um, but maybe by the time next spring rolls around, <laughs> I'll have lost a little bit of weight. And so they'll hang. Like, they're supposed to sit an inch below your waist. They're right now sitting at my waist, and I think that's making them a little, little bit short. Um, but they're still really cute and comfortable, and I really, really liked this pattern. I have a lot of, like, shorts, culottes, um, lightweight pant patterns, um, and this one is up there, especially for one that has, like, a fixed waistband and not elastic. I, did, I have talked about these pants on this channel before, but I gotta say this project is... I lived in Charleston, so more than five years ago, and I cut out these pants. Um, I don't remember what pattern they are. The pattern was not with all the fabric and everything, but when I went to attach the waistband and try them on for the first time, the waistband was too small by like inches, and that was five years ago. So you can imagine now, there was no chance that waistband was going on. So I just kind of chopped that off. Thankfully, the pants were way, way, way too long. So I was able to cut off some from the hem and make a new casing for an elastic. So that's what we've got here. Um, they are super, super, super wide leg, as you can tell. They really make a statement. They feel very um, artsy. They feel very like you just want to wear them with like an oversized button down and just really lean into like the whole like structured billowy largeness of it all. Um, so these are fun and I'm just really really glad I was able to get them in any form back into my closet. They have uh, side seam pockets right here. Um, and I can't wear them with heels now because I chopped all that off to make the waistband, but I don't know that I'd be wearing them with heels these days. Anyways, they look super cool with white sneakers, super cool with flats. Um, I've worn them twice, one with like a little tied up t-shirt, lots of compliments. And another time with a like flowy button down, also tied up, ton of compliments then too. 
All right, so this is the wool skirt that you guys saw last week. I already posted the pattern review for this. This is a McCall's pattern. Ironically, I said in the video that it is discontinued or that it's out of print, and it is, but my store still had some. My store, I guess, doesn't throw away old patterns, which I actually really appreciate. Um, so you might be able to find some older patterns in your store and then they go on sale like the rest of them do. Okay, so who remembers Iris Week? Um, Iris Week was a week's worth of videos where I made four or five different versions of the Iris T pattern. And it's the one that has like the really cool sleeve detail. This was one of them that I made into that swing dress that I altered and uh, slashed and spread to make into a swing dress. And I think even in the video that I posted, I mentioned that I didn't really love it. It felt a little short for how wide it is. Um, it just, I never wore it. That was the problem. So I just turned it into a t-shirt. I recut this bodice. So this is the bodice from that t-shirt pattern. I'll leave it here that I've been sewing up a bunch lately with the big sleeve. So that McCall's or simplicity pattern, I just re I found the center grain and recut the bodice recut a neckband and then attach the same sleeves to that pattern. That's what I did. So this is actually a pattern mashup. Um, so super cute, much, much more wearable. The fabric just really called for more of like a t-shirt situation than anything else. So, and I can wear that with the gray pants and it looks really cute too. Okay. So if you followed along this past May where I did like that big closet clean out where I tried absolutely everything on and decided what I was going to keep and what I was going to donate, but this dress, it was a dress. Um, and the bodice had become too small, but on top of that, I never really wore it anyways, because it had a low scoop front and a low scoop back. And so the shoulders always fell off. So I found it to be very uncomfortable. So I just chopped off the skirt. It's a beautiful circle skirt and then added elastic, um, like exposed elastic is really what it is. So you can wear it like that, or you can tuck the elastic in and have it look more like an actual waistband. Um, so yeah, perfect solution to that. Um, and then I ended up just chunking the bodice. Like I said, it was too small and wasn't, I don't know if it was me or the pattern or what happened, but it wasn't wearable. So, um, this was just like a little mending. The elastic had come undone. This is the sew along that I did earlier this year. So that's not really like a new thing. Um, this was a shirt that I got at Goodwill that was just longer. I cropped it, made a couple scrunchies from the leftovers. And that was that it was kind of like too tight again on my hips. Cause I'm such a pair. Um, even oversized boxy shirts just don't lay right here, um, that I find in the stores. So I have to crop them all. So they hit just above where my body starts to like, you know, curve out. So that was that. Now I've got a great little chambray, like crop top. Um, this one was the deer and doe dress that has that like cut out in the back, that like panel that flops over. I started this eight years ago, maybe, maybe longer. Um, and I could never get the fit right because I guess my back is so much narrower and smaller than the rest of my body. And so back then I barely knew how to sew much less like anything about fitting. Um, and so this went into a plastic bag, like a zip top bag and it never looked at it again. So when it came time to figure out what to do with it, I just decided to make it into an elastic waist skirt, salvage the skirt, ditch the bodice, I didn't have any more of this bird fabric, so I had to shop my stash and find this little like coordinating polka dot. And that's what we've got guys. I mean, it's not anything spectacular, but it's an easy skirt to throw on, go run errands, put it on with sneakers, super easy and done. You know what I mean? Just done and in the closet. Um, okay, this one, uh, you guys might have seen this. Didn't I post this on the channel? I feel like I did. Those of you that have been around for like, since before I moved to Charlotte, five, six years, you guys remember this? Ties in the front, very Gucci-esque. Um, it had, was just missing some buttons. Some buttons came undone. And I had never put buttons on the cuffs, so I just had to add buttons to this. And 
it had been hanging in my works in progress for all those months and years for buttons. So annoying. Um, and then finally, finally, we're kind of ending on a sad note. Actually, I've got one more, so we'll bring things back up. <laughs> but this is the beloved Carolina Herrera little hummingbird fabric. Um, I got this, I think, on our last trip to New York um, that Amber and I went on together. Started making this Berta style dress. Why I chose this one, I have no idea, but something happened. I I swear I added the seam allowances. I know Berta doesn't come with seam allowances. I swear I added them, but maybe I didn't do it correctly. I don't know, but when I went to try this on year years ago, it didn't fit. So I couldn't at that point just chunk it because this fabric is so special to me. And even when I pulled it out, I still couldn't cut it up. I still couldn't do anything. I just wanted to finish it and give it away just like this. Like I just wanted to finish it off and have it live its life that it's absolutely supposed to live. Um, so that's what I did. It has side seam pockets. I'm going to be donating this to my local Goodwill unless somebody else tells me they want it. I think it's like close to a ready to wear six, maybe. I don't even know. Um, yeah, it's really cute, really pretty. There's no chance this is ever going to fit me again. Um, so I hope someone else really enjoys it. <laughs> That's really all I have to say about that. It was pretty close to being finished. I really just needed to finish the arm side and the, sorry, the arm side and the neckline. All right, so this is that same Simplicity t-shirt pattern. Um, and I made the version with the uh, pleats in the sleeves instead of the big gathered sleeve head. Um, the fabric is a little bit too drapey for that design, but I wanted to try it out. I wanted to get this uh, sweater knit out of my stash. It's been in there forever and ever. So I just made this cute little easy lightweight sweater knit with a little bit of interest in the sleeve that you can kind of tell, but not really. That's it. Those are all the patterns that are all the projects that I was able to finish this month. It, it, I cannot begin to tell you how good it feels. However, I have barely, barely scratched the surface of the rest of the works in progress. I easily have 30 or 40 more unfinished projects. Easily. And I know you guys are probably like, what? But it's a combination of projects that I've started and not finished. Projects that need like an alteration here or there or need to be mended in some way. Refashions that I have a plan for but never executed. Um, older clothes that don't fit or I don't like or something's different or something changed about my kind of relationship to it and so I want to make it into something else. All kinds of different stuff. So if you want to follow along like the daily journey, follow me on TikTok. Otherwise, check back here in a month um, where I, hopefully we'll have just as many projects, if not more, um, to show you guys next month. So that is going to do it for me today. Um, if you want to see the plans video where I talked about this idea and sort of what got me here, it has a little bit to do with Swedish death cleaning, a little bit to do with like, you know, just not wanting to have stuff for the sake of having stuff. Check the link um, that I have linked on the insulate here. I've also got it in the description box. Um, and hopefully it inspires you and motivates you to tackle some unfinished projects in your life. But I will see you all very, very soon. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye.